Prime Hydration Drink, promoted as the best way to hydrate for performance. But looking at the ingredients, it's another social media hype. The theory is that when you drink Prime, you will hydrate faster and perform better because of its advanced electrolyte formula. While it is true that having electrolytes on top of just drinking water benefits hydration status, the Prime drink does not have the right composition of electrolytes to deliver on their hydration promise. Electrolytes are essential minerals like sodium, potassium, and calcium your body needs to function optimally and maintain a good hydration status. The thing is, while exercising, we lose a good amount of electrolytes while sweating. You can see sweating as the body's natural cooling system. During training, your body releases heat through sweating, which helps you regulate your body temperature within a healthy range. To maintain good hydration throughout all the sweating, it is important to consider your electrolyte intake, especially if you train in warm environments. There are two particularly important electrolytes in your sweat that we need to consider, and those are sodium and potassium, with sodium being present the most in your sweat. Research shows that doing intense training in the heat can cause sodium losses in sweat up to 5 grams of sodium per hour. That's like a day's worth of salt intake lost in just one hour of intense training. While with potassium, we lose between 160 to 320 milligrams of potassium in an hour of intense exercise. So it would make sense that if you have a science-based hydration drink, that you would have a relatively high sodium content and a low to moderate potassium content to rehydrate your body. What does Prime do in their hydration drink? The exact opposite. Bruh. With 5 milligrams of sodium and 700 milligrams of potassium, they miss the mark. The electrolyte you lose the most during sweating, sodium, is at a minimal dose. While potassium, the mineral you get from many foods and we lose at a slower rate during sweating, is highly dosed. Because the electrolyte balance is off, you will not see much more benefit in hydration status compared to simply drinking water. Next to sodium and potassium, it's worth mentioning that we also lose a bit of magnesium and calcium while sweating during training. But it is a small amount and if you have a well-balanced diet, you will not benefit much from having high doses of magnesium or calcium in a hydration drink. Now, what if we compare Prime with other sports drinks like Aquarius or Gatorade? Because Prime is low in sugar, Prime should be better, right? Well, not really. If we look at hydration research, we clearly see that carbohydrates help speed up the uptake of electrolytes when you are sweating. So having some glucose or basically sugar in your hydration drink helps you rehydrate more quickly. This is why famous sports drinks like Gatorade contain sugar and a higher dose of sodium. The athletes can regain the primary loss electrolyte, which is sodium, more quickly if they also have a fast-acting carbohydrate source. The importance of carbohydrates for hydration is highlighted well in a 2021 study. The researchers had three groups that all consumed different hydration drinks after training. There was a water-only group, a water-with-electrolytes group, and a water-with-electrolytes-and-simple-carbs group. The group of participants that had water with electrolytes and a simple carbohydrate source all in one drink saw the greatest improvement in hydration status. Therefore, if the goal is improving hydration, some sugar is actually not bad. If someone would be dehydrated due to training, the recommendation is to have a carbohydrate-based drink with a good amount of sodium and a low to moderate potassium dose. There is other research showing that mild dehydration of just 2% decreases your strength and endurance performance. So for athletes that train over an hour and sweat a lot, details matter. With intense training, having carbs and the right electrolytes directly benefits performance. Again, Prime seems to have missed the mark here. They made it a low-carb, low-sodium and high-potassium drink, which does not make much sense from a sports science perspective. Now, with all that said, Prime does have something that other sports drinks do not have, and that is the inclusion of BCAAs, also known as branched-chain amino acids. I really do not want to sound like a hater. But the inclusion of BCAAs makes no sense. BCAAs refers to three of the 20 essential amino acids that make up a protein. The three amino acids are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. The theory is that taking these three amino acids can give you muscle growth benefits for very little calories. However, based on multiple studies, BCAAs taken alone do not provide muscle growth or recovery benefits. Consuming individual amino acids is not beneficial. We need all 20 amino acids from a complete protein source to get the muscle growth benefits. Since Prime contains only 3 of the 20 essential amino acids that make up a complete protein, there will be no significant muscle recovery benefits. Considering all these points, Prime is not a science-based hydration drink. Of course, anything that contains some form of fluids will benefit hydration in some way. Even something like soup. In fact, most soups will even be more effective per fluid ounce because most soups contain some salt and you may also have a carb source in that soup. 
This is not to say that Prime is completely useless. A benefit Prime has is that it's quite low in calories, so if you like consuming Prime simply for the taste of it, it's better than having a very high calorie juice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but I see this the same like having a vitamin water drink or another zero calorie sweetened drink. You do not drink it for health, performance or a hydration benefit. You simply drink it for the taste and because it's low in calories. If that's how you feel Prime in your nutrition, it's all good. I also want to mention that I encourage innovation and entrepreneurship in the fitness and performance space, but it should be legit. I have been getting many questions about Prime Hydration from my followers, so I feel it's also my responsibility as a science-based communicator to let you know when something blows up in popularity but does not work well. I hope the founders of Prime can improve the formulation of their drink in the future and I wish them nothing but the best. Now, you may be wondering, if Prime is not a good hydration drink but we can still benefit from having electrolytes instead of only water, what to do for good hydration? To be frank, most recreational trainees do not have to obsess about hydration. If most of the time your urine color falls between points 1 and 3 in a scientifically validated hydration status chart, and you train a maximum of once per day for no more than one hour, simply having a varied diet with regular water intake and a few pinches of salt in your meals will make sure your electrolyte balance is in a good space. However, if you live in a warm climate and are notorious for sweating a lot, it is worth having a glass of water with a pinch of table salt before training on top of your regular hydration. After training, you can have another glass of water with a tablespoon of salt and a fast-acting carbohydrate source that also has potassium, like a banana. So you will have a good amount of sodium, potassium and fast-acting carbohydrates post-workout. There are some supplements and other sports drinks that do have the right formulation of electrolytes, but I just want to show you it's also possible to have proper rehydration with only whole foods. A whole food focus will also make sure that you get other electrolytes throughout the day, like magnesium found often in green veggies like spinach and calcium often found in dairy products. So do not feel like you must have a sports drink for proper hydration. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding about the science behind hydration and why we shouldn't always believe social media hype. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next one.